Hey guys, welcome to Get Better Press on Friday, April 22nd. The level one workout for today is four time 15 dumbbell thrusters or air squats, 200 meter run, 12 dumbbell thrusters or air squats, 200 meter run, nine dumbbell thrusters or air squats, and a 200 meter run. This one should be pretty darn quick. So if you're gonna use dumbbells, they should be light enough that each one of these sets is unbroken, although we like them to be hard unbroken. And then the running is fairly fast, knowing that you only have to run three times or 600 meters total and you get the break of the thrusters, well not really a break, in between. So make sure that you choose those weights appropriately or you just choose the air squats instead. The way that I'm gonna approach this one is really just trying to be not full out on it, but knowing that the first 21 or 15 thrusters is gonna be hard at the start. And I'm going to do it methodically enough that once I get through the 15 thrusters, I'm going to, I'm sorry, the 12 thrusters, I'm going to run pretty darn hard in the second to last run, knowing that I'm very confident in doing the nine thrusters and the 200 meter run. Make sure you check out the warm up in the description down below and the coaching videos coming up next for each one of these movements. We'll see you on the next workout. Make sure you have fun. For a dumbbell thruster, you're going to start off by putting yourself in your deadlift position or essentially clean position. So you're going to clean the dumbbell up into a squat clean and then thrust it overhead and then continue on with the thruster from there. So I'm gonna hinge at my hips, push my weight onto my heels, bending my knees when I have to keep my back flat, then I'm gonna lift the weight to my knees and then jump it into my front rack position. Then from there, I'm gonna drive the weight up overhead, keeping the dumbbells at my shoulders and doing my squat as I'm continuing, driving my weight or jumping it up into this overhead position or push pressing it, depending on how you feel the movement best for you, okay? Then when you go back down, you're gonna drop the weight back to the ground, keeping the back flat while you're doing so. So this is the same mechanics as your squat, with your feet slightly wider than hip width, slightly externally rotated, knees pointed towards your pinky toes, and you initiate the move by pushing your hips back and knees to the outside. For air squats and any other squatting position that you're gonna be doing, you're gonna take your feet into a slightly wider than hip width stance, slightly externally rotated toes. You're gonna to initiate the movement by pushing the hips back, pushing the knees to the outside, dropping just below parallel, and then driving through your heels to get back up to the top. So you're going to be looking something like this, and from the side, like this. And what you're gonna try and avoid is having your back round as you get down to the bottom. So if you feel like your back is rounding, you're gonna go down to the point where your back stays flat. And then if you feel it starts round, you're just gonna go right back up. So you would just stop yourself in that position. The other thing you can do is push your knees to the outside in order to get yourself into a lower position with a flat back and push your knees forward. So you start by initiating hips back, hips back, hips back, and then push the knees forward in order to drop yourself down into a lower position. That's totally natural and fine as long as you're pushing your knees to the outside towards your pinky toes. We're running, one of my favorites. You're gonna put yourself in a great postural position, chest up, shoulders back, feet underneath your hips. And what you're gonna be doing from here is you fall forward from your ankles and then pick up your feet as you need to because of the fall rather than pushing yourself off. So gravity is actually moving us forward and we're catching it as much as we can. There's still gonna be a little bit of a push off just to get our feet into the right position, but it's amazing how much you can use gravity in order to move yourself forward quickly when you're running. So everything stays aligned as you're running. Your hamstrings are what you're gonna try and focus on to pull your feet up off the ground rather than trying to push yourself off of the ground. So think of pulling yourself here. And then what you're gonna be doing is also thinking of striking the ground and your midfoot, okay? So right about there, rather than a toe strike or a heel strike. And the heel strike is really one that you don't wanna do, even though we have these big heels on our shoes. What it does is it actually slows us down every step because if we're trying to fall forward, we're stepping like this, you can see that that, mom that momentum is getting halted every single step if we're doing that. The other thing is that it puts a lot of stress on our joints, so we find that Heel strikers have more injuries than people that are having a nice, solid, good strike. Then we're doing a really quick, fast turnover. So almost as fast as we can for a maintained period of time, because that's also been shown to have less impact on our bodies than taking really big strides. And it does make sense when you break it down with like how much weight and impact you're gonna have into the ground with a big stride versus a small stride. Then what we're gonna be doing is 
looking at our upper body. So we're gonna be acting kind of like a robot where we're trying to clean a big thick piece of glass, just like this. And that's because we're trying to go in a forward direction rather than if we have over rotation, you see how it turns our body? We're not trying to go in that direction, in that direction, in that direction. We're trying to go forward in forward direction. So there you have it. There's the running technique. If you have any questions about running, I'd love to answer them. That's the workout for today. If you have any questions, let me know. Log your scores and sugar and we'll see you on the next workout.